Let's take a look at a cloud state Kotlin example that uses the Lightbend cloud state service to run this on the cloud. And uh, you can find the source code on GitHub, James Ward, cloud state sample fraud. Okay, first let's take a look at the code. So with cloud state, we use protobuf to model the messages that we're gonna send and then the RPC operations that will be performed. So we have a transaction with a timestamp, amount, location, and description. And then we have a user transaction that associates that with a cloud state entity key, which allows us to do the partitioning of the messages. And that also gives us the ability to scale this thing up and down horizontally based on uh, what's happening in the messages as they're being partitioned. Okay, and then we have a way to add the transaction, a user transaction, and get transactions. Let's take a look at the activity entity. And this is where the logic for handling those messages happens. So we've got an event sourced entity, and then you can see there's a constructor argument with the user ID, which is our partitioning key. So that's how we're able to partition this data. In this class, we have our transactions, which is our mutable list. And so whenever we get transaction messages coming in, then we're gonna be able to add them to this list so that we have our accumulated state here in this entity. Then we have a command handler for add transaction, which takes that user transaction. And then we also get a context, command context with there. And then we can have our logic for detecting fraud on a transaction. So whenever a new transaction comes in, we're going to use the past data and the new transaction to calculate the velocity. And so there's obviously lots of different ways that we would calculate, uh, compute whether or not the transaction is potentially fraudulent. For this simple example, I'm just using velocity. And if the user's velocity goes over a max velocity, then we're gonna say that there's possible fraud. And in this case, we're just gonna output to that to the console. But then once we have uh, potentially detected the potential fraud, we are going to emit a message which says, okay, we've done our handling of this message. And then that event handler will trigger. This will go on to an event log, which is persisted in Spanner, in Google Cloud Spanner. Okay, so that's the, the bulk of the entity processing. I've got a little class that just starts up the server, and then I've got a simulator class that is going to simulate some transactions. So let's go over and run this now. Uh, I already have this up and running on uh, Google Cloud via the Lightbend Cloud State service, but let's go start up the simulator. And what this will do is start adding a bunch of transactions to this transaction log. And what we'll be able to do once this starts uh, emitting those messages, we'll be able to see the messages that are being emitted here in the console. And then we'll go over to Google Cloud Logging to actually see uh, if we get a potential fraud. So here we go that we're now feeding a bunch of transactions into that system. The uh, We've got multiple users, so we're doing partitioning of the data for that entity. And now here in Cloud, uh, the log viewer in Google Cloud, now we can see the server messages from my entity that's running up on uh, Google Cloud and Lightbend uh, Cloud State. So let's go try to jump to now and see. There we go. Okay, so it looks like we just got a possible fraud alert and we can see the user ID, the merchant, the amount, uh, when it happened, and then the Google uh, map link to where that transaction was. And uh, if we let this continue running, we probably will see some more potential fraud uh, alerts coming in um, as that simulator runs. So you can see we're feeding in tons of messages. They're partitioned based on user ID. So we get the ability to auto scale the service up and down. And uh, that's, that's great for something like this, where the amount of transactions that are coming in is going to fluctuate throughout the day um, with probably more transactions happening in the uh, morning and evening, I would guess, and less at night. And so, uh, so great, we can scale our service automatically based on that. There's a container image that I built and deployed, uh, which contains my entity code. Okay, so that's the quick example of cloud state running on the Lightbend cloud state service.